Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 424. We're continuing with our lesson titled Dominion Theology. This will be part 4. Scripture teaches the Prototokus sons will free and develop the surface and subterranean regions of the earth and the heavens. Romans 8, 21. Because the creature, or creation, itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption, the deliverer of the bondage from the bondage of corruption, of course, will be the elder group of the Prototokis, into the glorious liberty of the children of God. In this case, the children of God are the priests. <coughs> the angel priests of the Prototokus group. <coughs> so one will be the conquerors, which will eliminate the Luciferians. The others are going to be the developers, which will install and instill <coughs> the conscious concepts and understanding of the Creator. Turn to Daniel, seventh chapter. Verse 18. <clears throat> Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse 18. <clears throat> but the saints the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So it's talking here about the aggressive assault that will depose <coughs> the Luciferians and transit under the control of the Prototokus. Now we find something interesting. We said that the Prototokus are going to free and develop the earth, <clears throat> its surface, its subterranean, and the heavens. When that takes place, <clears throat> these regions are going to, because they are alive, are going to rejoice vocally at their liberation. Turn to Isaiah 44, verse O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob, he from Manasseh, and glorified himself in Israel, the other ten tribes. So it's talking about a time when the creation is going to rejoice in its liberation, a time when Israel is totally going to be restored. This will happen simultaneously. All the creation is going to come into a, a time of liberty, of freedom. It takes place at the second coming. Turn to Isaiah 
55, verse 12. <clears throat> For you should go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. <clears throat> instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. It shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. You know, it's what it talks about, the plants coming up out of the earth. Everything comes forth from the subterranean region. So when the subterranean regions are freed, <clears throat> they will be freed by the prototokis. Turn to Matthew 16:18. Matthew 16:18. I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. He's talking about the church of the firstborn, Prototokos. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the Prototokos are going to assault the subterranean regions and free them up. When they assault the subterranean regions and liberate it, they will then turn it over to the old, uh, um, test the old covenant saints to rule. <clears throat> now I've understood you to mean the old covenant saints now take control of the subterranean regions entirely yes Okay. Yes. the reason for that is because the promises given to uh, Abraham. the Abraham, Abrahamic promises uh, 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 concern the earth it is fullest. We've talked about that the last lesson. They're going to be able to <coughs> dwell in the fullness of the Earth's matrix. Yes. Okay. They're going to be allowed to dwell in the fullness of the Earth matrix. Mm -hmm. This Earth or the new Earth? This Earth. This Earth. Okay. That's the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And so. then how long before this goes out? <coughs> A thousand years. A thousand years. So this essentially happens at the regeneration. Yeah. So it all takes place. It's from that point. Yeah, from that point. Okay. <clears throat> now we want to take a look at <clears throat> how this happens. The descendants of Abraham were given promises. Turn to Genesis 22, verse 18. <clears throat> And in thy seed, your descendants, shall all the nations of the earth <coughs> be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. <coughs> all the nations of... People look at this from a human perspective. I think it's limited to the human race. But we've <coughs> proved beyond the shadow of a doubt that there are many nations that are inhabiting the earth. Surface, subterranean, <clears throat> all of them are going to be blessed by Abraham's seed, his descendants. Why? Because they were given the promise of the yes. domination, dominion <coughs> over the earth in all its aspects. And we said in our last lesson, <clears throat> in the resurrection, <clears throat> the saints that participate in the resurrection are now equipped 
to <clears throat> encompass all areas of the earth. They're not confined being one dimensional beings to one region. They now dominate all regions of the earth and they're going to dominate all nations okay. of the earth. So what we call <coughs> the nations, meaning non-human physical beings in the subterranean region and other earth matrix mm -hmm. dimensions. Mm -hmm. Whew, that's enough. Are we understanding that the Old Testament saints are to develop and nurture those people? Yes. That's their remit, their mandate. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's what it means by you. Your, your, your seed is going to bless all right. nations of the earth. Right. <coughs> it doesn't say <coughs> all nations of the human race. Sure. Now, this starts with Abraham. We notice what happens with Abraham. Abraham lives and he dies. But he starts to rule, dominate in death from <laughs> Abraham's bosom. Scripture indicates this started with God putting Abraham in charge of the region called Abraham's bosom. Luke 16, <coughs> verse 22. <coughs> In the past, that the beggar died and was carried by the angels <clears throat> into Abraham's bosom. Now, this is physically being comforted by Abraham, but it's also a region which Abraham has charge of. <clears throat> and the rich man also died and was buried. Now, <clears throat> we notice scripture further indicates that Abraham is in charge of this region. by having the authority to dispatch souls back to the surface world or to other regions. <coughs> Verse 23 and 24. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send, send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, Cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. Why does he appeal to Abraham? Why doesn't he appeal to Lazarus? Lazarus, come on over here and tip the tip of your finger and want to cool my tongue. Because Lazarus doesn't have the authority to go back. Say it again. Lazarus doesn't have the authority to go back. Abraham oh, 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 has the okay. authority. Yeah, then it came. Gotcha. And that's true for um, Samuel, when Saul, same thing. Yes. <coughs> Luke 16, 24. But Abraham said, uh, 25, Abraham said, Remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Now, how does he know Abraham has the ability, the authority, that if he wanted to, he could send Lazarus back to his father's house? Because he knows the promise. 
intrinsically he sees it in the spiritual realm. Abraham <coughs> is asserting authority. You just get a vineyard here with Lazarus being in his bosom, but Abraham is doing other things which lets the rich man know he's got the authority to do this, 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 and this. So I'm going to ask him to do this, this, and this. So he wouldn't have been taught because he's a rich man who could afford uh, uh, tut uh, tutorship. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have been taught Abraham's promise and all the benefits that come with it whilst he was alive on the earth. He would have, but he wouldn't have regarded it. Just right. like Abraham said, they're not, they're, your brothers aren't regard sure. Moses and the prophets just like you didn't regard them. So no, he knows it by what he's seeing. Hmm. Activity in this region. Is there an implication <coughs> of what we'll call dynamis or glory on Abraham? At oh, that sure. Point. That's okay. why he calls him Father Abraham. Right. Yes. <coughs> All right, guys. This is a slight detraction, but it's a, nevertheless, it's a question that's been bothering me for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask it now. Mr. Jones, and I'm sorry if this is going to upset you, we know there are races in the interior of this earth. We call them aliens, okay? Mm -hmm. We don't see where th they're not mentioned here. They're, they, are they in the torment region or are they in some other, other region that is not Abraham's bosom? They're in another region. When you look, <coughs> the Bible is giving us the history of the human race. Mm -hmm. The human race is where it was created. It's never moved because it can't go beyond that. It has not the ability to compart itself around as the other races do. So where they are now is where they were created. Where are they going to stay until the resurrection? The resurrection, they are going to come up and be glorified with the ability to have the full dominion over the subservient Sub subterranean regions of the we're earth. We're talking about aliens. Aliens are going to be glorified? We're talking about Abraham's descendants. You asked me okay, if, the other, if the aliens are in <coughs> other regions. I said yes. And then I went to say the human race is in one place. They can't go any place else. They don't have the ability. Okay, I'm interested in knowing what happens to You me. could answer his question by Ezekiel 31. 16 those that go down <coughs> and are comforted by water at that point that group of people who are not humans are in a region called paradise which is not the human paradise and i know this because you taught me this therefore they would be classified as what he's calling aliens yeah but they weren't indigenous to the subterranean they came down from the heavens right but i don't think he's too worried about whether they're indigenous or not yeah <laughs> if you want to concerned about their origin where who are they going to come under abraham's rule is david going to be ruling them yeah okay yes. that's the promises given under the old covenant so that means every yeti bigfoot um what's that uh, snake that snake that leviathan in scotland Oh, oh uh, I know what you're talking about. Monster. Yeah. Uh -huh. All of these <coughs> species, because none of them are human, which are indigenous to the earth, come under Abraham's authority okay. at that time. We, we know they have a technology, some of the aliens, they fly around, they sure. surpass our technology. I don't know that that's their home, unless somebody's going to tell me that's their home in the interior of the earth. No. The planets, the abodes above the earth, are where most of them come from, other dimensions, most of where they come from. You're looking at the subterranean <coughs> races of the earth. Uh, uh, you find them, one mention of them in Revelation, the fifth chapter. Verse three. Then we're going to go to Exodus, the 20th chapter. First, let's read Revelation 
five, three. No man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look therein. So what's being said here, when the earth came into existence, it was populated at the command of Elohim by different races in the interior. The scripture tells us everything on the surface of the earth came from the interior of okay. the earth. Right. They are the first <coughs> inhabitants of the earth, these races. They were there at the beginning, they're still there. Is the implication that they came from the heavens first into the interior or they manifested in the interior? Manifested in the interior. So then that includes reptilians. Sure. Right. Sure. All the groups were designed to inhabit certain regions in the Earth's interior. Yes, exactly. Understand, understand, the mm. Earth's interior can't be compared to the surface. The surface is linear. The oh, interior is multidimensional. Elohim created them? Sure. And then he assigned... What? Huh? What did he create them for? What, what's their purpose? He's life. He spawns life. They are life expressions. Then he put the Luciferians in charge of them to develop them. <coughs> the same way that he's putting Israel, Abraham's descendants, in charge to develop them. That's a Abrahamic promise. <clears throat> In thee will all the nations of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. The human mind limits it to the surface. It doesn't say that. It says all the nations of the earth. We just read, no man under the earth mm -hmm. was found worthy to <coughs> open the book. For every man under the earth is going to come under the dominion of Abraham's descendants. That's part of the Old Covenant promise. Wherever their abode is, when the, revel when, the, when the resurrection takes place, and Abraham's descendants are glorified, they will take charge over all the subterranean habitations, developing them. The same way that the Prototokos is going to take charge of all the heavenly developed development states that the Lord wants, plus overseeing the Old Testament saints. Let me just okay. say. So, do these beings die, or are they eternal? No, they're mortal. Okay. So, where is it that they're, are they going to be judged? Sure. At the great white throne judgment, just like the humans. So at that point, do they have... That's why <coughs> the Prototokos and the Old Covenant Saints have the same job, basically. So we're understanding that they don't have eternal life. When I say they, I'm referring to the nations. Yeah. They continue and, to perpetuate their generations. Yeah, nothing in the, in the physical <coughs> is eternal. Everything sure. is mortal. When these nations... Hmm... After the Great White Throne, and once we're in the eternal state, these nations will still exist. In the spiritual realm, yes. Sure. And in the spiritual realm, they'll be eternal. Yes. They won't be perpetuating generations, no, which I think no, is... just like the humans. Yeah, what he's talking about. So we know the history of the, of the humans. Some, Methuselah, 969 years old, okay? Mm -hmm. do, the, do they have a limitation on how, how old they get? You know, I mean... It's, I imagine well, they're going to endure until the end of the millennium, just like the humans. Mm. They were around before the humans. They'll continue on until everything reaches, reaches its conclusion. Right. Because that generation makes everything live until the end of the millennium. Yep. Irrespective of what it is, yep. what it looks like. Yeah, it's going to perpetuate right. life. Uh, because the main reason is because the death zone, the death influence is re greatly reduced. Yes. Yes. Corruption is eliminated, so mm. everything lasts. But what you find here when you read <clears throat> the promises to Abraham and his descendants, they all deal with the earth. 
They all deal with dominion over the earth. It's talking about the totality of the earth, which has never been taught because people see it from a human standpoint. We know that this earth is going to go away. There's going to be a new earth. Is Abraham's bosom going to translate from the old, from this earth to the new earth? Abraham's bosom is in the new earth. Yes. Because it's the reason where the human race was created. Did you say you were going to Exodus 20? Yeah, Exodus 20. Thou shalt not make any, make unto thee any graven image of, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So it's talking about the life forms are being worshipped at this time. Turn to Deuteronomy 32. <laughs> ask you a question right now I'll screw you up. Go ahead. All right. Mr. Jones, where I am supposing angels pray, we know they worship, but do they pray? Why would they need to? <laughs> well, okay, I I can't imagine, you know, because I'm not in that realm, but I imagine there would be things that you would want to... We pray because we're on earth and we're addressing the Father in heaven. Any angel that has a need just directly communes with the Father. Whatever his need is, whatever his question. You find that in uh, Zechariah. The angel comes before the Lord and has him a question. Or presents a need. So, no, they wouldn't need to pray. Interesting. But Deuteronomy 32. Seventeen. They sacrificed unto devils. Demonium. Not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up. Here's your aliens. Whom your fathers feared not. They came up then, they're going to come up during the tribulation period. Why are they being called gods? Because <coughs> El connotes godhood, deity, something that's venerated. That's what they are. That's what the problem is. They're being worshipped. Which they shouldn't be because they're taking worship away from white VH. <coughs> but what you're looking at here is an example of Abraham being given authority to put down the nations. Is there a difference between worship and admiration? Sure. I mean, because... Yeah, I, I, I don't mean to cause so many other questions piled on top of the one, but can a being that's admired but not being wor worshipped? Sure. Admiration is a degree of what would be considered um adulation you're looking at something that you're putting on a high perspective that's a high level to a degree yes but you're not worshiping it they talk about matinee idols you know okay. they, they admire them they're not sure. worshiping them <laughs> they admire themselves <laughs> uh, wor worship is, is deification it's um something that you have put so far above you that you are subjecting everything that you are to this being. 
He just yeah. mentioned the word veneration. Admiration, well, veneration, worship. That connects, I was, I was going to point out that in the worship is the implication that the one who is worshipping looks at the deity as the creator in one way or another. Whether they're right or wrong is not the issue, but that's, that's part of the, the, the package. Well, yeah, they look at that person as the source of their life. Okay. okay. And they attribute everything to in him. that direction. Yeah. Um, this is what's going to happen when the Luciferians make their appearance mm. in the human race because it's not prepared. It's going to be in such awe of these beings and their magnetism and their um, extreme um, status, status above the humans is, is going to totally take the humans by sure. and uh, uh, totally over, overwhelm them. And they will, they will venerate them and they will worship them. Well, you see that today uh, for a thousand years. If you picked out a place where somebody said, well, an angel was here, the first thing they want to do is build a shrine over it and start worshiping it. Yeah. How much are they going to do when you see beings walking the earth, influencing the humans? This place is going to be all overwhelmed with people worshiping, worshiping, adoration. And all. But that, that, uh, that comes as a result of ignorance. But what you find, trying to address your question, these are the aliens you're asking about. They have habitations in the subterranean region. <clears throat> Elohim, because of his relationship with Abraham, favors Abraham and Abraham's descendants to do on earth what he's favoring the prototokos to do in the heavens. Hence, you have the Abrahamic covenant, the Abrahamic promises, which foreshadow <coughs> the prototokos relationship under Christ. When that takes place, it all culminates in the resurrection. Because those that qualify from the old covenant enter into the resurrected state, and the resurrected state gives them dominion over the nations, as the promise said, and all nations of the earth are going to be blessed by your descendants. Now, there's some other things we see that they're Just going to do. Just before you go, let me ask one quick question. Sure. So, from the point of the Great White Throne, where everything is spiritual, mm -hmm. can those who are Old Testament saints still be called Adamic, or is there another name used for that group in that classification? In the reason I'm asking this is because they've now <clears throat> superseded the Adamic state. Mm -hmm. They're, they have a new body. Mm -hmm. They're a new being, a new species. Mm -hmm. Would you still refer to them as Adamic? No. What would you call them? Uh, Abrahamic. Interesting, okay. Abraham was like, was a foreshadow of a new right. race. That's a new race, okay. That's interesting. And as a matter of fact, this is what they basically attribute to him to. Your descendants will do this, do that, do the other. In Abraham, will you be, matter of fact, it talks about the Abrahamic covenant that even we enter into. Sure. So it's a race of pattern after Abraham. <clears throat> now the things that they're going to be given dominion over, they're going to restore all the ancient Luciferian civilizations. Turn to Isaiah 58, verse 12. They, the Shabi of thee, shall build the old waste places. Now, the word old comes from a Hebrew term, olam, which 
can be interpreted as eternal. It can also be interpreted as ancient, out of memory. So build the old waste places. Now Isaiah wrote <coughs> 700 years before Christ, which is 2,000 years before today, so 3,000 years ago almost. He's writing about something that was ancient in his yeah. time. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the, 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 the civilizations before the Adamic race dominated the earth. Build the old waste places. Thou shall rise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. <clears throat> now, basically, it's talking about they are going to be the restorer of the ancient civilizations and enable the ancient civilizations to continue. Are you referring to the regeneration? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I'm talking about after the regeneration, their job. Remember, the Luc when Lucifer did his thing, there were, was a long period of time in which he corrupted everything. Civilizations were judged and condemned. Other civilizations rose and fell until he finally rebelled. <clears throat> what Israel is going to do is to establish those ancient civilizations and enable them to continue on for a thousand years. Under the Abrahamic agreement. So the Old Testament saints are the repairer and restorer. Okay. Just remember, this is all on the earth. It's nothing to do with the prototokians. This is right. the earth. Right. The earth, and even today, if you take a look, the Demic civilization is built over an ancient civilization that the government goes out of its way to try to cover yes. up its reality. I told, I told you before, year, years and years ago in New York, there were tunnels, ancient tunnels that um, my brother and I would uh, discover in Central Park because uh, we'd read a book called The Book of the Ancient Sea Kings which talks about ancient tunnels under Central Park. So we went out one night and we looked and we found it. There's a mound, if you will, that you walk into. It's like a hill. And when you get to the top of this hill, there is a covering of <clears throat> something. There's uh, boulders jammed in a gigantic hole in a hill. And uh, the sides of this structure are literally um, smooth stone, polished stone. And what they did when they excavated the park was they covered this all up and jammed boulders in there. The thing is big enough to drive uh, an 18-wheeler through. The mm. hole goes way back, back in the background. You don't know what it is. You can't go in there because the, 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 the city wouldn't allow it. Sure. But it was one example of tunnels that go into the earth which is an example of <clears throat> there's an ancient civilization that <clears throat> the Adamic civilization is built on top of. Mm -hmm. The subway systems in New York, a friend of mine was telling me about his, uh, his buddy <clears throat> that worked as a const construction crew when they were <clears throat> excavating, digging a, a passageways in the subway. They shut down because they ran into an obstacle which they, uh, impeded them. They were trying to build a tunnel to lay track, and this thing was sticking out. They wound up uh, bumping into it as they were drilling down, and they found it was a huge, huge hand, carved hand which extended to an arm that there was some kind of a humanoid statue. The thing was maybe 50 feet tall. Hmm. So what they did 
instead of uh, excavating it, they just um, tunneled around it and kept on going. And he was telling me they have dozens and dozens of examples of this stuff, this underground structures underneath Adamic civilization, but the government covers it up and uh, obfuscates and all the rest of it, but it's Luciferian, ancient Luciferian structures that uh, are going to ultimately come back into use during the millennium. Hmm. Well, is that going to be because the water is going to displace and, and go to a different region and dry is going to come up and no, the that's, old places are going to... No, that's because under the leadership of Ephraim and Manasseh, Israel is going to excavate the ancient civilizations using a technology, of course, of that particular era. The force fields will be able to dig through uh, 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 concrete or soil like you go through water. And they're going to uncover these civilizations, reactivate them, and people are going to again uh, inhabit them. Just like the prototokers are going to do in the heavens. The scripture tells us that the heavens are going to be restructured, made habitable again because they're going to be destroyed during the tribulation period. Well, that's going to be the job of the prototokers. So this darkness is going to disappear. Oh, yes. Long, long ago. So what you find here, Abraham's descendants, and of course, as we see, Ephraim and Manasseh are going to be in the lead, doing, leading the rest of the ten tribes in mandating, taking charge of their covenant relationship. And to them, you know, when you look at it, it's really exciting because there's a glory involved there. They're going to be contacting um, intelligences in the heart of the earth that today would, you know, be far higher over them than they are over um, the, the paramecium. <laughs> but in that time, <clears throat> these intelligences are going to be subject to them. That's part and parcel of the Abrahamic covenant. 